probably couldn't be any worse than it was. Um, they kept reiterating that it was a complete transection. I remember one day talking with one of the doctors and just saying, isn't there any hope? And they were just brutally honest with, you know, it's a complete cut. No, he's not going to walk. Um, don't expect a whole lot. Everything comes to a stop in a nanosecond. I was actually skating on my friend's uh, pond, and I dropped my phone when my mom said it because, you know, Jack uh, finding out his injury is just shocking. I've never felt anything like it, obviously. You know, I shouldn't have, at least, but... I mean, really, I'd never been in a hospital before that. And the first time I was there, I remember going up to the eighth floor. I turned and saw Jack in a halo, and I, I started crying. And, you know, it was just from seeing him earlier that morning to seeing him in a situation he was in the next day. When Leslie and I uh, went into the emergency room at Hennepin County, was he had no feeling underneath his neck. You know, he had a, a fifth and sixth vertebrae that were uh, crushed, and they felt that he was never going to be able to use his left arm. But here we are six months later, and, I mean, keep proving them wrong because he's doing things that they said he'd never do, and you can never give up hope. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll pause off. Right, so the outpouring after the injury was, it's, it was humongous. The news and the, just everything and what I'd already gotten and the, just the people, the phone calls, it was astronomical and what, what's been given or what, who reached out and stuff. Watching the amount of people at the hospital explode into like a sea of red every day. People we knew, people that Jack knew, people we didn't even know that well, people coming from all over that heard his story and just wanted to come, you know, tell us that they were thinking of us. Our friend uh, told me, uh, watch out, you might get a phone call from an unknown number, and I was just, you know, it was running through my head who it could be, it might be an old family friend, and then I answered the phone, and it was this, you know, deep voice, and uh, I said, oh, hello, who is this? He said, Zach, pretty soon, I was like, oh, my Lord. And then, um, like, Steven Stamkos called and promised Jack a goal, which was really cool, and sent us a pair of jerseys, which was really, really cool. And um, then you get calls from Wayne Gretzky, which is just, you know, is this actually happening? It's almost contagious that they believe that he's going to succeed and he's going to walk someday, and we all believe that. But I think that has really helped him quite a bit. It's just like, oh my gosh, you can move, and I'm like touching my face. I'm like, I've been doing that for like two months or something. So, and then you're like, do this, do that. I'm like, oh, do it again. It's like, no big deal. So it's kind of eye opening just to realize, just in public, like, like two people like that I've never seen before that just you wouldn't expect like following a story like this. Just how they're like just watching this and how touched they are just because I can touch my face. It kind of just made me feel that I know I have someone behind me and all these people caring for me and my injury. I, I can't go a day without somebody coming up to me and asking me if I'm Jack's mom and telling me that their family is praying for us. Um, things like that just mean the world to you. And, you know, so people apologize for coming over and talking to you. And I don't want anyone to ever apologize for telling me that they're thinking of us. And... All of that together has just made a world of difference. You know, we're, we don't live day to day. We live hour to hour. And uh, a lot of times we haven't had a chance to really thank all the people that we've, uh, that have been supporting us. And it just really means a lot to everything that they've done. I always say it, but I just can't thank everybody enough for what they've done. And I really sincerely mean it. We had no clue what we were in for, especially once we got out of the hospital. You, you can't really do anything on your own. You can try, but um, it's tough. I mean, just every little thing takes a lot of effort. It, it just couldn't have happened without the help of all these amazing people that have come forward and out of the goodness of their hearts have said, we're honored to help you. I'm like, I'm honored that they're coming to us. It's, they're making a dream come true and, and making our lives as normal as they can be. The way that I was six months ago to now, it's just, I'm totally different than what I used to be. And, and no one knows about it because no one would know. I, I had no clue. I mean, I'm getting used to it, but obviously 
as I get stronger and better at doing things, I'll be able to do more on my own. But right now, I just I just basically need an assistant almost all the day. The main goal is to get walking and just be normal again. But um, as of right now, I'd say try to get hand movement. I mean, that's the most important at this time. And just work on a lot of trunk control right now, just balancing and um, I'd say just getting stronger mainly, just being able to do more stuff on my own, be more independent. I can't imagine being told that you're never gonna walk, never gonna be able to use his arms, and he's already proving the doctors wrong. It's been amazing. Uh, he's kind of done a lot of different things that no one ever expected. He uses his left arm that they said he was never gonna use to use his power chair. Uh, he's able to pick up food with his right hand and feed himself. He's, he's He can easily brush his teeth with those that hand. Medically, it's this, but for some reason this is really unique and he's just, you know, getting better and better every day. He does therapy five days a week at Courage Center, but he does the ABLE program, which is a far more intensive type program. I should say it was developed by the Christopher Reeve Foundation for very intensive therapy, which rejuvenates the muscles and reconnects with the brain. The ABLE program stands for activity-based locomotor exercise, and it's an intensive fitness and wellness program. There was a whole committee of people that went around the country, looked at all the research to figure out exactly what it is we wanted our program to entail. And after that planning process, then we started a pilot program where we kind of practiced the different theories that we understood from our research and from the other programs and things that we know based on our knowledge base here. We've got a lot of experience, but now with all this cutting edge research and technology and things that are coming just in the past, you know, 10 years really that it's been started, uh, we have been able to do a lot more new and exciting things. Yeah, I'm going to stick around and watch Joe. No, I mean, <laughs> no one came in. When did Joe come in? Came in at like the 7th or 8th. Got a two out single up the middle. Classic. Yeah, the retraining is really retraining the nervous system and helping the spinal cord remember what to do. The spinal cord is very smart and it remembers once we do that retraining, it remembers what to do. Right left leg back. Beat your record today? Huh? So is it a record beating day? OT is really so. important, PT is really important, but then you add this ABLE on top of it and it, it's just getting everything active again and moving body parts around and, and getting his insides going and hopefully reconnecting muscles and memory and firing things up and having it communicate with the brain. The Neuro Recovery Network through the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation their mission is to develop new interventions for people with spinal cord injuries and to test them out and to have them be evidence-based. So they look at the research to see what's out there and then test out all these different interventions. So it's a great resource to us to know that the things that we're doing are, are proven and effective and, and we know that they make a difference for people with spinal cord injury. that weight onto that right hip again. Keep it on the left. Okay. All the way up straight. It's shocking what he can go through and what he can handle and well, put a positive spin on it and keep fighting. He'll have his down moments, and uh, but he always gets through them and he'll, he'll walk one day with his determination. He will. Oh my God. Go. Come on. There you go. Breathe out. <laughs> Tall, shoulders back. There you go. Every spinal cord injury is different, and they're all in different timetables. You see certain people advance very quickly, advance. I think what's on Jack's side is, one, he's a 16-year-old and he's growing. Secondly, he's he's an athlete and he's very goal-oriented and um, when people say he can't accomplish something, he's definitely determined to prove them wrong. Oh. Failed the driver's Failed. test right there. <laughs> 
we're always working hard, but um, yeah, we usually try to stay loose. Uh, it gets to be long, but it's obviously worth it in the end, especially these first 18 months. It's really important to do excessively hard therapy, and it's uh, that's the best time to recover, so there's only one way to go, and that'd be up for me. So do you feel how you kind of fall to the right a little bit right away when I let go? Yeah, because you take the weight off of that. There you go. That's a lot better. Nice. Pull yourself up. Until these programs started, people would do traditional therapy. The therapists really focus in on getting them in their wheelchairs, making sure they you know, have a way to get around and can be indep as independent as possible. And that's really where the traditional therapy leaves off. And the difference is now is we're really looking at recovery. So where before people kind of had their end point, and now we have this whole other continuum of things that people are able to do where we don't know what the end point is now. Lean back just a little bit. There you go. Now hold it. Use your abs and pull yourself forward. There. Things are changing that we just never expected. You know, there's people that have these complete injuries that they say they were told in the hospital they would never never get off the vent, they would never move their arms, they would never be independent in anything, and they would be dependent and in a wheelchair forever. And now we're seeing people that, you know, things that they're doing are just amazing. You know, we have people that are starting to take steps that should have never been able to do that. I had a person who just the other day, she was able to stand up and give her mom a hug for the first time since her injury. So I think that those quality of life things that are changing for people, when they have the hope and the optimism and the just the chance at things that they never had before, I think is amazing. I, I think it's huge, such a big part of the rehab. And we're so lucky, there are only five in the country and we have one right here. And, you know, we get to go to Courage Center, and Jack does it. You know, he does the treadmill, the, the part in the harness, three days a week, and then he does the FES bike and, you know, other stimulating exercises. I've seen huge, huge, huge difference since he started doing that. And everyone that comes over, even if they haven't seen him in a few days, has noticed just day by day how much stronger he looks. Like, you know, he's getting his shoulders back. He's getting his leg muscles back. You know, I'm just so proud of his determination. I don't know how he gets up every day and smiles and how he doesn't hate the world. So many people could and he doesn't. I'm so proud of Max as well. I mean, that kid is a 13-year-old whose life was just flipped upside down and he's handled it so well too. And I think he's handled it because of the way Jack has handled it. And I think all of us are looking at things positively because of Jack and his attitude. This could be good. I would never want to go back to that day or six months ago, but, you know, I just look forward to moving forward, so to speak, and having him continue to do things that he shouldn't be doing. Oh. A goal is to make his life as normal as possible. You know, he wants to get back to school. He wants to go to college. He wants to have a career. You know, it'd be great to see him have a family someday. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> but no one else wants to eat them after you do that. <laughs> Fine with me. <laughs> We're lucky that it happened now and not five, ten years ago. And there's just so much going on. And we need to keep Jack's story going to keep all that research and everything going. You know, I want him to be part of these programs that are, you know, maybe unique, um, that seem like they're going to make a difference. Most importantly, it would be great to see him get up and walk and skate. <laughs>